Hey, Betty. We're going to be putting in the uh, Triton 5L water heater. And um, I'm unboxing it right now. And uh, first thing I pull out is uh, the shower head. That is way better than the one I bought. I, I can put this in the bathroom, though, because, uh, well, I don't know. I may put one out here, too, where there's an outside shower. But this one's completely adjustable. It doesn't have an off valve on it, though. Not that I can tell. And um, the next thing I pull out of the bag here, I mean, the box is... Uh, It's the flex line. Look how relaxed and nice this is. <laughs> I think I'm going to put this in the bathroom. This is nice. Comes with a regulator for the tank. Speaking of the tank, um, I've been looking at uh, putting uh, the tank inside here at the bottom, and I thought about putting in a, uh, a box that is sealed and vented to the outside, but, you know, I still don't like the idea of the tank being inside, the actual inside of the the, the bus, where it's underneath your, your bed, you know. Um, my last bus, I built a garage in the back because it had a back door, and I had it in there. And uh, I don't think you, I even like that idea anymore. You know, more I think about it, the the more I think that the, uh, um, the the propane should be outside of the bus. Um, you know, it's pretty dangerous if you think about it. You know, you get a leak or something. Even in a sealed box, there's still room for, you know, things to happen. And if it's on the outside of the bus, a lot less likely. Um, all the standard RV builders put them outside the bus. I mean, there's a lot of people probably argue with me about that. I see a lot of these vans being built with them inside just because of uh, restraints on on room and that type of thing but I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and buy a undermount horizontal tank and and put it right underneath the bus but um back to the water heater okay Here it is. This is a Triton 5L. And the way this works is it has an igniter right here. You put batteries in it. And when it senses the water flow coming on, this ignites. You set the heater, the temperature right here. And you can set the water flow also right here. And um, all in all, it controls the heat. and. Uh, I used one of these in the last one, it worked really well. And what I did is, at the top here, where it, this is propane powered, I forgot to tell you that. It's got a propane inlet on it, let me see here. No, that's your water inlet, and this is your hot water outlet. So, um, there's the propane connector right there. But, um, the last one vents out the top here. In the last bus, I built a panel that slid over the top of this and it had a round top. It was a square plenum, went to a round top, and that round top vented outside. And what I did is I took my back window out and I built a panel where that tube would go outside. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. That's why I wanna take the glass out of it so I can put the aluminum panel on there and mount me a vent for going outside. And. Uh, this thing doesn't run all the time anyway. It only runs when you need it, like for a shower, or if you want to do dishes inside and you want hot water. So, um, and you know, my recommendation for anybody that actually puts a tank inside their vehicle is to make sure you don't travel with a valve on. Turn that dude off. And it's probably common sense and everybody does that, but um, just a thought. But anyway, here it is. I'm gonna take this swivel handle off of it because it doesn't need it. But it's gonna mount right here like this. 
I'm going to bring my uh, my lines up right here, right to it. My water lines are going to come down, and they're going to be the PEX water lines, and they're going to split off and um, run to the sink and run over to the shower. What this is going to take is one cold water line coming up and the hot water line coming out, and um, then the hot will tee in to a T and it'll run over to the shower, over to the sink. And I may put another valve right out here for um, for doing an outside shower in case. It's always convenient to have an outside shower. Um, the, these are the only mounting holes that I see is right here and here. Should be plenty, top and bottom. It doesn't weigh too much. Feels like it weighs maybe six pounds. But my last one I bought worked really, really well, and I was not afraid to do this again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mount, get started mounting this up on the wall, then I'll bring you back to it, okay? Hey, you guys want to see me take a window out? I'm going to do it the easy way. <laughs> I'm going along the inside edge of the glass, almost perpendicular with the glass. So this should just uh, oh man, I cut all the way through that too. I can feel it. real stiff or there's some type of glue in there so boy I was gonna be a smart I can just rip this right out of there for you Put down that knife before I have a little a accident. <laughs> There's a the glass. That wasn't too bad, I guess. Not as slick as I wanted it to go. Look at my face is red because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I just thought you guys might like to see that. Okay, welcome back, guys. I've got this mounted. And you can see by the uh, screws up there, I put some in, uh, 9 16 cent, um, 
so it wouldn't go through this three quarter inch board. And I put the same three under here. And um, I have since put these uh, shark bite fittings on. These are half inch female to shark bite fitting. Both of these are the hot and the cold. Whoops, hot and the cold right here. And these are just a push fit. I showed these to you in an earlier video. These are called uh, shark bite. And um, I drilled a 5 8 hole so they snug in there nice and tight. So they go straight down and <coughs> they go under here. I had to put elbows under here. Now keep in mind this is like seven, eight bucks every time you make one of these joints here. And then I put in uh, a couple T's here and that cold run was going to run over to the pump and this this hot here is going to run over to the shower. And um, then these two run this direction and they go into the sink cabinet where, where there will be hot and cold water. And uh, this is looking like it's going to be fairly simple to do. It just pops all together really nicely. It's kind of expensive, kind of bummed out about that, but uh, you can see where my other two pipes on the back wall over there are. They're the ones that run over to the shower. So I got to get that all connected in and um, I need to hook in a T over there on the cold water side. And the uh, hot water side will just get an elbow to continue it on down that wall. And um, right now that's where I'm at. <clears throat> little warning about these here. Where these go into the bottom, the, the threads, I put some tape on them. And uh, you can't over tighten these. Otherwise you'll twist these right out of the body of the, uh, of the uh, hot water heater. You got to be real careful with that. You know, gently tighten them, get them snugged up, but yet not over tight, or you're going to hurt them. Same way with this one. Now, lucky for me, the gas one here has an actual spot here where you can put a wrench to hold it, then spin this one on with a wrench. And uh, we'll get to that, though. We're not doing that right now. We're just going to go ahead and do the water lines. But I'm just saying that this one here is going to be a little bit easier to do because we can put a wrench on it. I won't have to worry so much about over tightening it and damaging this unit. Um, this thing is made by Camp Chef. I called it a Triton 5L, which it is, but I forgot to tell you it was Camp Chef. And uh, there's some info on the side of it if you're interested. You can pause this and read it. But anyway. There's where we are. So, um, I'm making myself a nice big mess here. <laughs> that little shelf sure came in handy. And um, I'm going to keep proceeding on, and I'll take you guys with me as, as we go here. I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, guys. You're not going to believe just how easy this really is. I'm going to... Um, I just pushed on the, uh, the hot water over there. See it? I'm going to get down here so you guys can see it. This is the hot water. See, this is the little valve that turns the hot water off and on. And here's the cold water side right here. And uh, all it takes for this to go on here is you just put it on here like this. And just press it on. There we are. We got both valves in just that easy. And you can turn them off and on with these right here. And uh, I still got to put this little clip on there. But that's just easy peasy. Well, I went and had to say that, didn't I? I had to say it was going to be easy. There. And it just pushes up like that. And there we are. We have water lines for the uh, sink faucet. Man, that was good. I, need, I still need to put this on here like that too. 
but I don't believe I have a clamp in here. I don't. I'll have to come back for that one. But anyway, that's it. So I centered the uh, um, Camp Chef Triton 5L right in the middle of the window. And I should have room to uh, get my pipe out the top, my exhaust pipe, right out the top there. And uh, I do have the panels for these, the aluminum panels. I haven't put them on yet. And um, man, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't photo the, I mean, video this one here, because uh, <laughs> this one took me about 15 minutes to get out. And uh, that would have really been embarrassing. Yeah, the. Uh, kind of glued the lock strip on it. I had to completely cut the rubber apart on both sides just to get the darn thing out. Um, uh, I think there was a little cussing involved that time too. <laughs> well, geez, I guess that just happens. And uh, I want to thank everybody that has subscribed. I'm uh, over 200 now, yay. And uh, I don't know why I'm counting, but uh, it's just kind of nice to know. And uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. This has been uh, a lot of fun for me. And it's a, it's a type of therapy, actually. So uh, I really enjoy it. And, uh, oh, man. Look what Ribs did to my seat. Well, he's lucky he's not around here. Nah, I wouldn't hurt him. I was just kidding. <laughs> he's my buddy. Yeah, you can tell he's afraid of me too, don't you? Uh, well, I'm going to catch you guys on the next trip. And, uh, hey guys, so far, you know, I'm really liking these shark, uh, shark bite fittings. They're, uh, they're just press and play. I mean, just as easy as you can do it. If uh, somebody really didn't have any skills at uh, doing plumbing, this would be the way to do it. I mean, you're just cutting it to length and just pushing it, just inserting it in and pushing it in. And it just locks on and takes a shark bite out of you, I guess. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it so far. Now, after I uh, fire up my pump and water up the system, you know, power up the system, the thing starts springing leaks everywhere, I'll have to eat these words. But uh, <laughs> right now, I'm liking it. Um, kind of spendy, though. I went out and, and bought uh, a few more fittings today. It cost me 98 bucks. I was just shaking my head, but... Uh, you know, sometimes you got to pay to play, don't you? Okay, so um, I'm going to call this quits on this uh, segment, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.